All right, going to show you that the Catholic Church denies the biblical doctrine of the new birth and a changed life after salvation. You see, when you get saved, you're going to have a spiritual sanctification. You're going to have spiritual regeneration after salvation. The Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up. And it can take years of sanctification to get some sins out of your life. But the Catholic Church denies this. And they basically teach a works-based salvation where you're having to sanctify yourself. It's a false gospel. And let it be accursed, according to Galatians chapter 1, verse 8-9. through 9. But this is from the Catholic Council of Trent. This is uh, the Canon on Justification. This is ses Session 6. Canon number 24. It says, let me just zoom in. It says, If anyone saith that justice is not is received and not preserved and also increased before God through good works, but that said works are merely the fruits and signs of justification obtained, but not a cause of the increase thereof, let him be anathema. Session 6 again, Canon number 32. If anyone saith that the good works of one that is justified are in such manner the gifts of God, and that they are not also the good, the good merits of him that is justified, nor that the said justified by the good works which he performs through the grace of God and the merit of Jesus Christ, whose living member he is, does not truly merit increase of grace, eternal life, and the attainment of that eternal life, if so be, however that he depart in grace, and also an increase in glory, of glory let him be anathema. So what are they saying? That the good works you do are not just the fruits of your salvation, which is what the Bible teaches, I'm going to show you that from scripture, but they're actually, you're having to merit your salvation by good works. And you'll find that many street preachers out there teach this exact same heresy, that you basically have to just merit your salvation by your self-righteousness and your holiness. It's a false gospel. Now, the Bible teaches that good works are not part of your salvation, but that good works are the results of salvation, they're the fruits of salvation. Acts 26 verse 20 says, uh, repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Paraphrasing, of course. But uh, the works are the fruits of repentance. Not You're not doing it to be saved. You're doing it because you're saved with the help of the Holy Ghost. It's called spiritual regeneration. I'm going to show you that from Scripture. Uh, works have no part in salvation. Good works are the results of salvation. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 to 8. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed for us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the faithful saying, And these things I will, that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These these things are good and profitable unto man. Men. Okay. When you get saved, you should maintain good works, but it's not by your works of righteousness which are saved. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed, blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Your sins are purified by Jesus Christ, but when you get saved, He'll make you a peculiar. He'll make you a peculiar people, you know, as believers, zealous of good works. But that's after salvation, after your sins are already washed away. You become zealous of good works. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight to ten. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, through which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved by yourself, or else otherwise you could boast. But you're created for good works after salvation. It's called the new birth. Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 to 11.
For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, be thou, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God, who hath saved us, and called us with a holy calling, holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and brought and hath brought life and immortality and light to light through the gospel. Uh, where, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Not by your works, not according to your works, but according to his own mercy and grace. That, that you are freed from the power of sin. You see, there's three aspects of salvation. You're justified, you're saved from the penalty of sin, you're sanctified, saved from the power of sin, and you're glorified, saved from the from the presence of sin. That happens at the rapture, by the way, glorification. It happens in that order. First justification, then sanctification, then glorification. That order. It's not it's not the same thing. There are three different aspects. Don't have time to get into that. First Timothy chapter one, verses twelve to sixteen. And I thank God, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Uh, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might, might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which they should hereafter believe on him to ever be, believe on him to life everlasting. Not good at reading on computer, but Paul's changed life is an example. Okay, in time past he did it ignorantly in unbelief. He did it ignorantly and in unbelief. But his changed life is an example. It's a pattern for us. Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in prayer of mine, of, of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the day until now, from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, uh, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, even, as it is, even as it is me for me to think uh, this of you, because I have you, I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my bonds and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, that ye all are partakers of my grace. God has begun a good work in you, which He'll perform until the, the you know the, basically the rapture of what He's saying there. He'll perform until the day of Jesus Christ, the rapture, the glorification of your sinful body of flesh. He's begun a good work in you. That's called sanctification after salvation. It's a good verse. Philippians 1, 6 is a good verse on eternal security as well. Because he'll begin that good work with you until the day of Jesus Christ. He meaning he won't stop. He won't forsake you, basically. So Philippians 1, 6 is a good eternal security verse. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 to 11. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made comfortable unto his death, if by, me, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead." Not by your righteousness, but the righteousness which is of faith. It's that simple. And Paul lists, you know, how he might know him in verse 10. A good verse on a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But he had a changed life. And it's an example we're supposed to follow. So the Roman Catholic Church, they deny that. They think that your works actually merit your salvation. And they flat out say you're a heretic and you're a curse and you're anathema. If you say that the good works are the results of salvation. They're denying biblical salvation. They're denying sanctification after salvation. They're mixing sanctification and salvation together, just like any works righteous cult does. Roman Catholicism is not Bible-believing Christianity. Roman Catholicism is a pagan Babylonian cult. It is from the councils of Satan. And Roman Catholicism is a one-way ticket to hell. That simple. Your works don't save you. Your works of righteousness won't save you. If you're trusting your works to save you, you're on a one-way ticket to hell. That simple. 
Roman Catholicism is not salvation. Roman Catholicism is pagan Greek Roman Babylonian religion repackaged. Don't be deceived by the false gospel of Rome. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.